News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. Welcome to Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorson with Thor Sammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning. And I'm Ellen Gilbreth with DarkOakMedia.com. And I'm Maximilian. And for all you anime fans out there, a belated happy birthday to our beloved Hayao Miyazaki. Yes. Oh, even, yeah, oh. Miyazaki. I think even amateurs might know who that name, that name right? If you don't know that name, you have definitely seen his work. It yeah. is absolutely visually uh mind blowing. Yeah. That Why? that is that that it's um it's animation. Get it's a uh, it's just simple animation. And but some he of his, is amazing. And some of his most amazing stuff is his earliest, which is pretty impressive for the time. Yes. What is it what's his big what are two of his most famous ones, Max? Spirited Away. Oh yes. And Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah. My suggestion is you go get yourself a nice seventy two inch TV, turn oh. all the lights off and watch this, you know, watch his work. So it, well, anything he did, I'm just, I mean, it's just his career is decades. I mean, it's not like he made one or two movies. No. I and mean, this guy's been, uh, he just celebrated. 82nd, I 80, believe. Yeah, it's like his 82nd birthday. He's been in the, he's been in this business now for almost 60 years. Yeah. Wow. Well, ironically, that's a pretty interesting, uh, that's a pretty interesting occurrence, Max, because later uh, today, I'm actually heading over to Anime Blues Con Winter Remix, and Alan, uh, we're sort of dividing and conquering, <laughs> Alan and our buddy Brandon Olmstead are heading over to Shadow Con at the mm-hmm. Clarion Hotel. There's two geek events the same day. I hate it. You have to kind of pick between one or the other, it, unless it, you want to marathon it and go to both or it, something. It, but. Joe, you know the funny thing last night at one of the conventions? Yeah. The first thing anybody said to me as they walked over was, your favorite line every time we do appearances. Okay. Somebody walked over to me and said, I can't fry chicken. Uh, wait, what? The Food okay. Dude Show. You know, um, the Food Dude just takes over everything. We just can't get away. I okay. can't get away from the fried chicken. All right, good for you, Alan. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, we'll be there. So we, we hope you'll come say hello. You can geek out at Anime Blues Con Winter Remix at the Lander Center. Ten mm-hmm. bucks to get in. Yep. If you have a Shadow Con badge, you get in free. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty cool. There's a lot of cross-promotion. One thing I'm very proud of in the uh, Mid-South is all of the... Uh, convention uh, organizers all the convention attendees we're all friends so we support each other we don't want we want all of the uh, conventions to grow so it's it's pretty cool so we'll be geeking out later today alan but um in the meantime if you want to call or text us during the show you can uh, get in touch with us at the big m roofing and remodeling hotline at 901-683-0989 and send pictures you know i mean pictures Mm -hmm. are good i don't think you can send video but um uh, also, I would uh, I would say uh, it behooves you to go over to Facebook and check out our uh, check out Tool Talk Radio over there. I've already posted the must have item of the week, Alan. So um, we're good to go. Yeah, and I'd like to give a shout out to a new country following Tool oh, Talk good. Radio. Okay, are you ready? I'm listening. Well, I don't even know. I I don't even know how to say it, but I'm going to say welcome to Romania. Romania. I- Really? Guys, home of Dracula. Need, oh, we need some pictures. It's all I gotta say, Romania. guys. Come on, boy! I bet they got some interesting architecture out there. I, Alan. I just, I, you know, we guys, we do great moments in building history, and you have some amazing, okay, Romania castles step up. and stuff, yeah. man. So welcome, welcome to the family, Romania. Okay, now that's that's an interesting development, Alan. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely have to follow up with that. Maybe we can get them to, uh, you know, start interacting over there. So absolutely. Okay. Um, okay, Alan, big day today. We've got in great moments in building history. Uh, the, okay, we had to we had to pick and choose, but this was one of your babies. This is something you were interested in. The Ice Hotel in Sweden. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the town. You know, those Swedish names, yeah. just like the Icelandic names, it's like, it's like, I, there's afraid, not enough vowels in there. So. I'm afraid if I try to pronounce this, I'll awaken a troll. Right. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it, it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of consonants. The twist in this, though, Alan, is it's an ice because you know in in uh, Minnesota they've had one for years. They yes. have a, it, or they call it the Ice Palace. Well, this is year round, and I'm right. doing the calculations. I'm like, wait a minute, they they get summers in Sweden. How the heck do they pull this off? Well, we're we're gonna find out. Oh, so. don't worry, Sweden. I'm a Sweden summer is only like I'm a twenty degrees. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yep. So, uh, Alan, your week in review uh, might need its own show soon, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes. Um, uh, there bro- was a lot going on this week. Broken sprinkler heads in a medical yeah. facility. There you go. That's some comedy gold right there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Add in some commercial dryers. Yeah, you got it. 
our must-have item of the week. Alan, uh, later in the show, we're going to all sit around the fire and sh and swap some tool tales. <laughs> At, mine is going to be fun with routers. Yours is uh, Legends of the Coping Saw. Mm -hmm. And Max is going to uh, wow us with the story of two screwdrivers and a socket wrench. Oh yeah, uh, I can't wait. That's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. I've got I've even got suggested viewing. We got a lot. I'm not even gonna tease Alan. I, I've only listed half the uh, notes that I've got here. Oh yeah. So I don't want to do that because um you know there I don't want to out of time fast. Yeah. But before we get to that, you had a you had a sort of a follow up, right? This is a follow up well, report to a story uh, Max, Max brought, brought us. us the 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 wonderful story of an aged cat right uh that is still hanging around with us old flossy old flossy Flossie's there. still around max she, she made it this week i'd have to check <laughs> <laughs> there hasn't been an announcement we're so following Flossie's the uh, developments so. i'm reluctant okay. i'm reluctant to look at the feline obituaries okay so yeah well, 27 years old holy smokes yeah. well yeah. this one didn't make it to 27 but it is the remarkable life of a celebrity mountain lion p22 so that's the that's all he gets the just a designation. Well, he has and that's his tag designation, and that's how he became famous. Because guess where he lived? That's what I was waiting. That's to hear. that's the real kicker here. Uh huh. He lived in the Hollywood Hills. Okay, because you know you you brought us that story yeah. of the uh, the overpass that they're building, or they maybe they built it. They, they've but. built overpasses, but this guy's nowhere near the overpass. He is out in the middle of the city. Oh come on. Not kidding. He is living in the Hollywood Hills. Interesting. Which yeah. is why P-22, you know, uh, because they had the tag on him, they would actually have, uh, like, tracking. Mm -hmm. Where was he seen? What was he doing? What was he up to? So he's been a big celebrity out there for a number of years. And, you know, it's kind of weird. Hollywood is kind of a different place. Um Here's a giant carnivorous lion loose in your backyard, and he has posters, plushy toys. They have a P-22 mountain mountain lion printed mask for the pandemic. So Wait, how old is he? How old did you say P-22 uh, he is? He has been loose in the Hollywood Hills for about a solid 10 years. Okay. Well, I don't. How long is the? How long do they live? I mean, about ten years. They, they. I mean, they're okay. So he's old for. Yeah. Well, he just he he was recently picked up for an annual evalu evaluation, and they went. He didn't. He's not going to make it. Okay. So so P twenty two has left us, but talk about having. You talk about just kind of a weird neighborhood watch, in I the middle to, of the Hollywood yeah. Hills, in the middle of L A. No, I, I. You know. Max, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, like, I was doing a little research on P-22, and I like I look at some of his accomplishments. It's like, oh, Discovery in 2012, National Geographic photos, and then the 2016 koala killing. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got a hold of a koala? Yeah, the disappearance of an elderly koala named Killarney. Wow. Whose carcass was found outside the koala enclosure. Well, man, uh, it's... Yeah, so he well he has to eat. You well, know, he he's needs a his protein. Lion, but but, but uh, Alan, it's funny you mention that because you know when I lived in San Diego, I remember specifically. In fact, my wife she's got friends in um in L in L A. And it's the weirdest thing. You're in a city. You're driving to you know you're driving to to stores and things like that. And yet up up in that hill, just right over there, there could be lions, bears. There could be well, coyotes. She, she her friend had chickens. Yeah, and they snuck in the back and ate a chicken. I think they killed one of her cats. They, well, this is you don't this, you don't leave your door open in the backyard. No, so well, this wasn't like, out in the hills. I mean, this is Griffith Park. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. This is suburbs. This <laughs> is this is exact. Yeah, it's, right. In California the is an everything. interesting place. So so All right, so P twenty two had a had a pretty good run. Uh, you know, he made it 10 years. He survived major L.A. freeways. Yeah, that, that I mean, alone is. A... I mean, in the Mid-South, we've got a couple of decent-sized roads, but we got nothing like no, California. I mean, seven lanes They got across, seven, they... eight, ten lanes right. of nonstop traffic. And, mm -hmm. you know, the amazing thing is, all right, except for maybe the koala incident, um, he actually found enough wild prey to sustain himself. Yeah, I'm just wondering. I mean, uh, unless maybe he had a maybe he had a routine down. Maybe you go to uh, the taco shop over there and hit the dumpster, <laughs> and you go to the. He probably had a pretty good little system of at night, you know, cleaning out 
What? Man, I like it, some of the um, uh, film and television that came out about him. There's one that's called The Secret Diary of P-22, <laughs> The Cat That Changed America, and America's Most Infamous Mountain Lion. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this, this, he was oh, huge. I've never heard of this guy. Okay. He was absolutely huge, but the thing it kind of brings up, and being in the Mid-South, we, we're an urban area, but yeah. we're really spread out. And if you see us from above, you know, if you look at the Google map, Memphis is really green. Oh, all you see are the trees. We got, you can't even see your you know, house. So. You look yeah. at some place like Atlanta, and you definitely see city. Mm -hmm. You you look at Memphis, you see a lot of greenery. We have a lot of greenway sure. through the city. Yeah. So we have a lot of critters. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was uh, was given a wonderful picture this week of a huge possum sitting on the top of a friend's fence looking yeah. down at the dog. <laughs> okay. And it looked like they're having a conversation. You, you could tell these two have met. Oh, yeah. Because the dog wasn't going crazy. The dog was kind of like, hey, how you doing, yeah. man? Yeah. So, you know, welcome to it, folks. We got wildlife that live with us. And, you know, Joe, you had squirrels and everything, but you never had a mountain lion. No, no. We've got an owl in our backyard that's pretty, uh, you know, don't leave your cat out at night. They'll, yeah, they'll... don't put the chihuahua out there. Yeah. No. So, all right. Well, you talk about critter wars. I mean, that's... Uh... <laughs> That's very interesting. Well, P-22, uh, I suppose uh, you will be missed, but uh, well done. Oh, definitely. Done. Okay. All right. Hey, Max, I've uh, I've got something here I want to share. So, All right. This, Alan, um, I thought it, it behooves us now that we've, we've um, gosh, how long have we been here? Alan, we've been here a year, almost mm. a year and a half at... Uh, at uh, News Talk 98.9, The Roar, you know, we're, we're just, it, it's funny. Every time I walk into the studio here, there's that new studio smell. Mm -hmm. How long is that going to last? Did they put an air freshener in here that I, smells new? Well, they keep doing new things. We got new stuff on the door. They come in and do things, so. It's fun, man. And it's 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 been a delight. We've been over here at Cumin, yeah, about a year and a half. And, um, you know, a full, you know, all through from the beginning to the end of 2022, and I thought it behooves us maybe to just take a look at Tool Talk Radio in 2023. Maybe what are some things the listeners might expect? Mm. What are some uh, What are some things that we expect from our listeners, perhaps? So I, I've got a few things I wanted to throw oh, out okay. there. Well. So uh, definitely look for us in the coming year of 2023. I would, I would think it's going to be a no-brainer that we're going to be doing some more of our live remotes. Those are fun. Oh, I love those. Um, those are great. I mean, you know, the Cooper Young is sort mm -hmm. of a staple and a lot of the home shows of the Mid-South and um, probably a, a convention or two, <laughs> you know, yep. ditch if you'll keep allowing that. So, but um, <laughs> Alan, those remotes are a lot of fun because, you know, honestly, when you do this, you don't really meet. Well, you meet people all the time. I never meet anybody, you know, that that recognizes me or anything but uh it's fun when you when you get to meet people and they and they can say tell you what they think oh, yeah. and and you know it's 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 neat i like that so. do they really want do you really want to hear what they have to think not always <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you need that honest feedback so and it's it's fun to get well know? i think it's hilarious when people when they find out it's it's one of us mm -hmm. you know be me you because you know let's face it if you gave a description of either one of us to the police yeah they would pick the other one up Probably. You know, we We're don't not look on... that dissimilar. Right. That's um, true. So. Those they, two they, cue balls over there. Yeah. So, they yeah. Just, I, I just find it amusing that people walk up and will just blurt out a question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 I, I, I put it. I put in my own socket. Yeah. Like, okay. Well, that's really good. And how did it go? <laughs> it's, I it, just. It just kind of cracks me up that people just. You know exactly what is on their mind because of something it, we talked about. It's funny. Uh, it's funny you say that, Alan, because we were at the home show of the Mid South last year, and we're just sitting at the table, and it was after the show was over because you know we hang out there all day. Oh yeah. So, and some lady without any preamble or whatever goes, okay. So there's this one part of my sheetrock that does blah yes. blah blah. No hello, no yeah, whatever. Just walks right in, and Boom. I'm just like, oh okay, and I'm just you know. So it's like the <laughs> it's like the 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 information desk or something. So it's kind of fun. I, I like but. the ones that pick up halfway through a story. Yeah. Like, so, okay, can like, you introduce so, me to the story? Well, like, yeah. So Joe was doing this varnish. Yeah. And you're like, okay, we've only talked about varnish about 300 times. Yeah. It's like, we, <laughs> throw me a bone here. Was it a table? Was it a chair? What were we doing? Right. So, so uh, it, it's hilarious. But yeah, I love it when people walk up and ask questions. Yeah. So live remotes, definitely uh, look for that. And uh, and actually, we might be pulling up in the old uh, uh, News Talk 98.9, the Roar van. Because, uh, uh, folks, that thing's been outfitted. Uh, Ditch has got it kind of like uh, it's all, it's all, um, 
got the stickers. It's all it's all finished. Decal and decal decked out. Yeah, so awesome. kind of like the mystery machine in Scooby Doo, you know. So we pull up and 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 park that baby. So Alan, I think it's safe to say that they can look for some Tool Talk Radio swag. You're in the middle of uh, you. You've already got some anyway. I do. What are some swag things that they might look forward to? Uh, so. You know. I- well, because of a big announcement at Walmart, there's probably going to be some more shopping bags coming mm. forward. Uh, I think that's a good one. Tool uh, Talk Radio shopping yeah, bags. Yeah, a lot of the of uh, a lot of the stores are getting rid of their plastic bags and are encouraging you to use your multi-use bag. Nice. So yeah. we we have some really nice one of those coming. Of uh, we've had some uh, amazing little Tool Talk uh, little toolkits. Yeah, those. those were, what do you call that? They're like a screwdriver a with about instant four different screwdriver sets. repair kit. Right. And it was uh, those were amazingly cool. So we got, we got some stuff to look forward to. Uh, right now, I'm looking for some. Uh, um, what are the nail aprons? That's what I think we yeah, need. Yeah, th- like I'm, you I'm see at the big box right store. Yeah. We why why can't we get that? So I think yeah. we are. I think I think that's going to happen in the next week or two. I got a Tool Talk Radio hat. Maybe we could start making mm. some hats and T-shirts or something. So what's a what's a what's a item of swag you think we should we should make, dear listeners? Ooh, so let us know and and keep it cheap. And please don't <laughs> say anything with the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I think licensing might have something to say about that, yeah. Max. But yeah, and and I'm still a little mad at the Cubs. So um, all right, anyway. that's good. It's been quiet. Quiet. Yeah. Stay mad at them. Um, okay, and and we would we re- re- really want more uh, listener requests. We've got some pretty good uh, followers over on uh, Facebook. Mm-hmm. I, a- we, Angel deserves her own shout out. I mean, she's oh, absolutely. great. Uh, Robbie, our buddy over there, the 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 hardwood floor guy, and um, a lot of you know. There's some others that we run into. They they said that you know, like when we go to the convention today, Alan. There's there's several of our geek oh, yeah, friends well, that, uh, that we'll like run to into listen. Scott J. Carroll. We'll run into Lori. We'll run into Angel. We'll run into yeah. So we we've got kind of a, a good a good crew, good street crew, if you wish. But we'd like to hear more from like you know, what would you like to hear? What segments do do you enjoy? That's, what is what is the problem bugging you? Right, and that plus, is the perfect. Segment. It's you two. No. Yeah, <laughs> but more than anything, what I want to hear is about some of your home improvement triumphs. I mean, mm-hmm. we've got we've got the perfect platform. We can post it on our uh, yeah, Facebook page. Text mm-hmm. us something on the uh, Big M Roofing and Remodeling text line nine zero one six eight three zero nine eight nine. Send us something you're really proud of. Send us a picture of your favorite, uh, some of your favorite tools that you mm-hmm. use on a daily basis. So. And if you need an idea, all you got to do is pop over to TooltalkRadio.com mm-hmm. and through either YouTube or Spotify, you can binge, honestly, years of us. That's true. And uh, uh, see if see if anything resonates that you want to get involved in. One thing I will say, it, like we said, if nothing else, it puts you in the right frame of mind to do home improvement. So, I mean, you, like I said, if you put it on on a Saturday, you get you get up, you drink your coffee, you head to the big box store, get get all your building supplies and just binge listen, put it on in the background mm-hmm. and, and listen. So, But my ultimate goal for 2023, Alan, it's probably a foolish quest. It's ah. never going to happen. And it's just a, a pipe dream. But I want to have a, a live appearance by Mrs. Brown. Larry Brown's uh, wife, the elusive, uh, you know, uh, Mrs. Brown, uh, one of the, um, one of the, it's uh, like a Bigfoot sighting, one of the pillars yeah. of Brown refrigeration. <laughs> it is. I mean, you see her from time to time, yes. but it's too, she's, she's in and out too quick to get a picture. Yep. yep. So you have no photo evidence. And, uh, but we're, one on, day we're, we're gonna... on site. She, she blinks by for a moment. And, right. Yep. But if you get a chance to uh, ever call, you know, Brown Refrigeration, if you're oh, yeah. lucky, uh, or just, you know what, just ask for Mrs. Brown. Just, you know, a lot of times <laughs> she's she's there and she will be answering the phone. And you'll see what we mean. She's got a great personality. Mm. Mrs. Brown, if you're listening, I don't know why you won't come in. I, 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 I still, <laughs> Does she just like to sleep in on Saturday Absolutely. or something? I, I don't know. So, but um, anyway, that's, uh, Max, what are you looking forward to in 2023? And don't give one of your snide remarks. So, I haven't yeah. really thought about it yet. Okay. All right. Well, uh, it's it's a car that works better. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need you need to talk to uh, Motor Mouths. Yeah. Exactly. So, but no, we 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 love being over here. It's we, uh, the hundred thousand watt tower. Oh yeah. I still can't get over that. You know, sometimes uh, when I'm driving, like if you have to drive to Nashville or something, mm-hmm. I've I've listened to the station. I'm I'm out towards Jackson, uh, Tennessee, and I can still hear the station loud yes, and clear. You can. 
It's so, wonderful. Um, you know, check it out. And, and as Alan said, go to Spotify, go to YouTube, go and uh, check out those platforms and, and binge listen. But we sure appreciate you listening every Saturday morning. And um, we've got plans. We've got new Ooh. segments. We're constantly uh, trying to innovate and come up with, uh, you know, better better stuff, basically. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about 2023. So um, I, I thought that was worth a mention. And once again, if uh, if you can't wait, Come see Alan today over at the uh, over at ShadowCon at the Clarion Hotel near the airport, and and I'll be at uh, Anime Blues Con Winter Remix at the Lander Center. So um, you know, geek out and, and little check all those things out. So, um, Alan, I I'm sort of we've got a, a potpourri of things to get to. I'm thinking <laughs> what you, what you know what we should hit next. I suppose uh, it behooves us to get to Alan's week in review. So maybe that's Ooh. what we want to hit on when we get back. So. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a rough one, so strap in, everybody. You're listening to Tool Talk Radio here at News Talk 98.9, The Roar of Memphis. We're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. Dad, your hand is jammed in the toaster. Dad! Dad! News Talk 98.9, The Roar of Memphis. Yeah, just pour some water on it. <laughs> be all right. And welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and don't pour water on it, folks. No, I guess we no, should say that. Don't, please don't. And welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning. Here with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max over there behind the glass. With my hand jammed in the toaster. Yeah, get that thing out of there, Max. <laughs> you can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. And we really encourage you to do that anyway. Call or text. We want to hear, what would you? What, what do you look for, you know, or earlier in the show if you're just tuning yeah. in we were we were sort of looking ahead into 2023 what 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 can you look for at tool talk radio in 2023 and we we'd like to know what you maybe yeah, would like what, to what hear do we what we need to reminisce like? about in 2024 right <laughs> yeah exactly so uh so you know it's all it's you know this is a team effort folks let's let's hear from it, is, so, it is uh so so let us know let us know the the segments you like maybe you've got an idea for for some yeah, other come good on segments. new zealand come on romania yeah so, i definitely in, you guys. know alan told us earlier in the show that uh Rom we we've got some listeners on spotify from romania that that poses some interesting opportunities alan oh, I, mean, I just you know i want to see so some pictures. much fun to find out where the show wanders off to when we post it that is one nice thing about the internet you couldn't do this before you know uh, I mean, anybody you know, can listen from anywhere yeah, so. pop over to youtube and uh give us a like subscribe to the channel go to spotify give us a like subscribe yep. to the channel take us with you of uh, it is absolutely amazing that we can record something on a Saturday morning and people honestly, literally around the world can listen to it. You know, it's even a freakier Boom. concept, Alan. Right now, okay, you and I are sitting here. It is it is uh, January 7th, 2023. Somebody right this minute may be listening in in uh, January 2025 because once it's on the internet, it just sits there. It's sort it of stays. a time capsule. Yes. It sort of hurts your brain when you start thinking of it. And those, so <laughs> so if you're listening in January 2025, hey, welcome up, welcome aboard. Where mm. have you been? And uh, you is know, Joe let's get still alive? It. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, speaking of that, um, a, a big we want to give a big uh, send off to P22, that California mountain lion who uh, had a pretty good run. Ten years yeah. is good for a mountain lion, right, Alan? He but, did uh, really good. And crossed. only one, or, and only one, um, uh, urban casualty with the koala. <laughs> yeah, he took out a koala back in whenever well, that was. You so. know, everybody likes a little, you know, likes a little Australian food now and again. And so. Alan, I'm sure you can tell us the best way to cook a koala bear, right? I mean, you don't. They taste like cough drops. <laughs> and he knows that. So. And don't ask me how I know that. All right. Well, speaking of more horrible things, in a minute, Alan, we're going to get to our tool tales. But let's let's keep things civilized. Before we do that, let's talk about our good buddy, Larry Brown from Brown Refrigeration and his elusive wife, the charming yet uh, secretive Mrs. Brown, you Absolutely. know, who will never come on our show. It's a pipe, you know, it's, it's a foolish quest that we keep asking. So no, I don't you know. keep asking anyway. But I will say this. What is not a foolish quest is if you have any HVAC needs, if you're concerned mm. about the clean air in your home, if you want to manage all of this from uh, from your telephone, you know, I mean, from your 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 smartphone with the smart home technology. Boy, there's no better company to call if your system needs a tune up which they all do, Alan. Right. 
You don't just wait till something breaks. Oh, yeah. Don't wait for another polar vortex to get your furnace checked. Right. Mm. Keep it keep it running, you know. And so so anyway, there's no better company to call. Brown Refrigeration, rock solid. They've been around. I uh Google it, folks. Whenever Kenny Rogers the Gambler came out, they've been around that long. I want to say that's like are we getting close to fifty years. Yeah, Gosh, we're yeah. getting we're getting up there. Larry's he looks good for his age. I'll yep. tell you that. So. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it, it's it's uh, it's important because you're 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 you know as we say the uh, HVAC system is sort of the lungs of your home. It's it's important that that functions properly because man, it's one of those things when it is running efficiently, it literally pays for itself. Yes, it one does. of these tune ups or what if you get a new system, you're going to notice immediately a difference in your utility bill. You're definitely going to notice a difference in your comfort. And yes. um, and also managing it uh, with the smart home technology, there's a certain peace of mind you get as well. And, of course, if you get the Remy Halo system, which is very affordable. I mean, yes. honestly, it's 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 sort of a no-brainer. I think all systems, you should, you should think, maybe that's your goal for 2023, get a clean air system in your home because uh, – these things, you know, they they not only um, they're not only putting out clean air; they're putting out air that cleans every every molecule that this air uh, that it land. Or how am I saying this out? These are little cleaning molecules. Every surface it lands on is being scrubbed and cleaned, and uh, it fights against COVID. It it really it, clean air. It's a it, it's it's such a nice thing when you go into a building with clean air. It's very noticeable. What you notice is you don't smell anything. What you notice is it's very uh, it's very clean. So anyway, if you have any uh, any HVAC uh, needs or concerns, get in touch with the good people at Brown Refrigeration. You can uh, call them directly at 901-362-1881 or go to their very easy to uh, remember website, brownref.com. Alan, you said you got a text over there? Uh, we did. We okay. just got an awesome text question. Talk to me. Uh, good morning. How much a pain in the neck is it to remove popcorn from walls and ceilings? <sighs> Wait, walls? Who's like, the, I like walls. I'm like, who's oh, the uh, who's the rotten gosh. person that sprayed it on the walls? So. I don't know, but the question is, how much is it to remove popcorn from walls and ceilings? Well, I think there's the, the, the whoever you are, I, dear listener, there is no good answer to that because it all depends how they put it on. I've seen popcorn. It, you literally get up there, you take a knife, you scrape it off, you're done in 20 minutes. It, I've the, seen it where the biggest thing is the prep. It, this right. is kind of like painting. Yeah. Prep is 90% of the effort and the pain. If you will go ahead and get everything out of the room, mm -hmm. honestly, I know that's a pain, but take everything out of the room and plastic your, your floor really good. Including your vents. And what you're going to need is a one of those big, nice, wide drywall knives mm -hmm. and a really good face covering. Mm-hmm. I don't mean a little set of goggles. I mean, get a full face mask. Can, can I say one thing? Absolutely. Alan? Because here's one thing I will say. Okay, because uh, if you get if you get yourself a spackle knife, folks, the reality is, especially if you've got one, maybe you've had for several years, look down the edge of that spackle knife because I guarantee there's a little burr it's or it's or it's curved, and you don't want to be. Um, if if it makes sense, if if this was a bow and arrow, you want the the rounded side touching right. the ceiling because otherwise you get these lines and these, it scratches you it scratch, up. So right. you got to. I, I I'm partial to like the six inch blade. I don't want the big twelve inch. That's too much for me. But uh, what do you, what 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 one do you pull out? Uh, I I prefer the new one. Yeah, uh, it's <laughs> worth just buying a new uh, one. But, honestly, yeah. every time I have to take uh, popcorn down, it is time to buy a new knife because. You want that clean, easy push. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where it gets interesting and possibly gets horrible. Yeah. A lot depends on how it was put up. And it depends on which product they put up. Everybody goes, oh, it's just popcorn. Right. There's actually several different kinds and several different brands. And they all stick a little differently. Right. But normally, you can get, if you've got a stuck spot, you can get you a little spray bottle, put a little warm water in it, and lightly mist that area, and you should be able to just scrape it right off. In some cases, if the popcorn wasn't put up real well, mm -hmm. like if you look underneath it and it's just raw sheetrock underneath there. Be careful with that. The yeah. minute you begin getting this stuff moist, it will begin peeling off the ceiling and dropping to the floor in big, goopy, wet messes. Um, If you, boy, I hate that we're always ripping on the 1970s, but I'm sorry. It's just yeah. the way it is. The, one thing that was notorious in the 70s, 
they would they would put up popcorn ceilings and even wallpaper without doing any wall prep at all. Right. And as soon as you start removing it, you're peeling the 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 sheetrock paper and everything, and that makes a mess. And it's it doesn't it, it's terrible for the sheetrock. You don't want to just you, you yeah. Know, that's so. that's why the the good blade and a nice mm -hmm. wide blade, whether it's six inch or eight inch. I agree. The twelve inch is really too big. It's kind of unwieldy. Yeah. Um. There are a number of products out there. I've even seen kind of a scraper with a hamper under it I, to yeah. kind of go through and do that. Gets a little heavy uh, after a while because you're I, reaching overhead. That's yeah, the thing I don't like. I prefer to be a lot closer and up on the ladder so that I can push the, the debris in front of me to the floor. Here's one thing I'll say, dear listener. I don't if you're right handed or left handed, this is something I've just learned over the years. Get a for one thing, get a ladder that gets you up high enough. If you've got an get eight close. foot ceiling, yeah. there's nothing wrong with getting a, a six foot a ladder. Six foot ladder, yes. Because you can put the little you can put the stuff on the tray in front of you and and by all means, don't be spraying directly over your over your no. head. You want to spray out <laughs> like if you're right-handed, spray out over your right side, maybe a two foot by two foot square. You don't saturate it, but get it wet enough. And and one thing that's good about when you spray it is it 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 kicks the, it, it um eliminates a lot of dust instead yes. of that big dust cloud. It'll mostly just be a sloppy mess that falls to the floor. That's why you want a nice a, thick a nice a, a nice good floor. plastic below you. And, uh, you know, is it worth doing is is the other big question you got to ask yourself, because one word of warning, popcorn was used to hide a lot of sins. Mm, yeah, it's funny you say that. Alan, they, they didn't really tape the, the stuff good. They really didn't. So there's going to be a lot of mud work when you're done. Now, when you're done, you have that beautiful, flat, gorgeous ceiling mm -hmm. or whatever else it is you're going to do with it. Of, but just kind of keep in mind, you really do not want to get in a hurry. One thing too, folks, and uh, you know we're talking about spraying it and um, getting that smooth finish. Well, the, the 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 cold, unfortunate reality with that is, Alan. Even after you've scraped it off, you're probably going to have to still take a pole sander and sand it light once it's oh, yes. all dry. And so you're still going to get dust. You're not going to get as much dust as you will if you. You know, but so it, it just prepare for some dust. And I, I'm a big fan of clean up as you go. Don't like just have it piled everywhere because then you're oh, no, walking no, no. through it. Then you yeah. walk through the living room and you track it in there yeah. and just clean up as you go. And and it's not terrible. I will say this. It may, you know, I'm partial to a nice, flat, clean ceiling. And I, I feel like it makes the ceiling look taller. It does. It you does. Know? And I'm going to throw in an additive that you want to go purchase before you do this. Okay. You want to go buy a tacky mat. Ah, uh, tell us that. Tell uh, us what that a tacky is. mat, you can find them online. I don't know if any of the big box stores carried or not. I've never seen them there, but this is a contractor trick. Mm -hmm. We go online to XYZ Supplier, and uh, the tacky mat is actually a semi-sticky floor mat yeah. that you put down as you leave the area. Right. And that way, when you step on it, any loose material on the bottom of your shoe will adhere to that and not go stomping out into your carpet or down your uh, down your hallway. Oh, that's cool. So. so the tacky mat is absolutely a must to help keep the mess out of the non-work area. Okay. Now, uh, whoever you are, dear listeners, send us some pictures. Uh, send it. Make sure oh, yeah. you're suited up. Make sure you have a hat on and uh, and a dust mask. And yeah, you'll discover goggles. It. Maybe I don't know. Well, but, you really want a good face mask. I find goggles just to be insufficient. Because, let's face it, drywall dust gets everywhere. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, hey, great question. And I'm sure it's a lot, something a, a lot of people deal with, you know. I well, know. a lot of people are going to start looking at that spring clean. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, you know, guys, all right, all right. Everybody, Valentine's Day is only five weeks away. Okay. So start looking now because spring is going to be here in six weeks. Oh, yeah. 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 We got it. We got it coming. So, all right, Alan, we've we've held off long enough. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alan, this is sort of becoming a, a fun part of the, the – this is a uh, – I, I look forward to this because I always enjoy your suffering over mine. <laughs> I look forward to it because I get to push the button and I'm going to destroy people's eardrums. Exactly. So uh, Alan's Week in Review, as we've said in the past, you know, Alan is uh, – 
Uh, if you're new to Tool Talk Radio, Alan uh, never does the same thing twice. One week. Oh. Y- y- yeah. I, you know, I guess it gives you variety. And, uh, you know, so <laughs> we always like to know what you're up to. So let, let's look at uh, what what's uh, what sort of projects did you tackle this week, Alan? Well, so. you know, we're still dealing with the aftermath of Winter Mageddon. Still, huh? still. Yeah, well, I know a lot of people are, you know, which it's it's funny. People up north are laughing at us like, you know, th- our civilization collapses down here if we get a few sub-freezing we, uh, days. We, but, we get know. one zero degree, a couple of zero degree days and yeah. the Mid-South goes crazy. Right. Of a, a huge thing is a lot of buildings and especially out of apartment buildings and stuff like that all have sprinkler systems now. Oh, yeah. And uh, basically, I have two horrifying cautionary tales of sprinkler systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them is the dry sprinkler system. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know what that is. Now, uh, the dry sprinkler system has a riser that has water in it, but it is also connected to an air compressor. <laughs> and the air compressor puts enough air pressure of into the system to keep the water in the main pipe, but not out in the system. So that you have a dry system. So that when you do get zero degree weather, water, no water in is not expand. sitting out there in these in these items. Okay, that makes so, sense. Yeah. So okay. here becomes the cautionary tale of no matter what kind of pressure you put on water with air, um, water evaporates. And water condensates. Yeah. So out on the end of these runs, you have drain areas. And you have to drain these periodically because water will accumulate. And water will freeze and burst those pipes and or sprinkler heads. Uh, sorry, quick question, Alan. Because, uh, sorry, you know, and folks, if you're new to Tool Talk Radio, anytime Alan piques my interest, I tend to interrupt because I don't want to lose the thought, you know. But, okay, you're making me think of something, Alan. Every time I've ever turned the water off in my house to, like, do some plumbing work, when you turn it on for about the first 20 seconds or so, you get that it's either like a black, cloudy water or yep. rusty colored water mm-hmm. because whatever you dislodged in the pipes is uh is exposed the sediment is right the sediment well a dry system because okay you're calling it a dry system but to me there's still moisture in there yes there is i would think there'd be a tendency for these things to rust and get really funky in there yes okay which to me is going to cause all sorts of problems really horrifying i don't love this system alan no no (laughs) (laughs) this sounds like it's asking for trouble do you see where i'm going with my week here of holy okay and then let's add to the fact that we had uh, one day of rolling blackouts. Oh, right. Yeah, that was And fun. guess what? That air compressor was turned off. Mm, yeah. And yeah. guess where the water did? I, I think I can imagine. It went and flowed into those freezing cold pipes. And just, oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. How many, how many, you know, people should understand, you're talking about, you're talking about a facility with like over 200 rooms and things like that. Uh, we're, individual this, thermostats. Individual. Yeah, this, this facility was about 40,000 square feet. Just, oh, so it's about 50 rooms. Yeah. So this is about 50 rooms of, you're looking at, you know, by the time you get through chasing the piping, there was over, you know, you you, you had your cute little one pipe break. mm we had numerous sprinkler head cracks and probably about, a, we had to replace about 100 feet of copper pipe. Oh, my gosh. So, now here's the big thing. If you and do, keep your tenants comfortable. Yeah. If Gee, you do what? live someplace that has these types of systems, I'm going to tell you the sound you want to listen for. Yeah. And that is any form of hissing. Oh, yeah. If you think it's that, a rattlesnake or that something. That light little just sound is probably the worst sound you could ever hear. Sure. Because either the sprinkler head is cracked and air is escaping, which means eventually water is going to come out of it, Mm -hmm. or water has already found its way to it and the sprinkler head hasn't completely given. Yeah. So now you have a fighting chance. (laughs) Because (laughs) happily, you know, uh, we got the notification that somebody heard something hissing and there was some water on the floor. Oh, man. But there was nothing that made water anywhere near where this water was on the floor. Water is like that. It might have come from 20 feet away behind a well, wall Well, it was coming or from a sprinkler head back behind right. the service area. So here's water beginning to hiss and spray. 
And this person, thank goodness, paid attention and alerted somebody. And when we got there, you know, we're like, okay, everybody shut up. <laughs> yeah, we got to listen. Yeah. And then you heard, right. And we're like, okay, shut down the riser, turn off the pressure, call this, call the alarm company. And the one thing I found out from the alarm company was a lot of modern homes, a lot of little higher end homes now also have sprinkler systems. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they were talking about, all right, look, if you know you've got this kind of horrible weather coming, call your sprinkler vendor and they will tell you how to winterize it for right. the event. Right. And you winterize different systems different ways. But most of them involve getting the water pressure off of it so that you're not 72 PSI when a pipe burst. Yeah. So, I mean, welcome to the, you know, welcome to the 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 interesting world of safety that, you know, can come back to on. I, I just want to say something too because uh, I like I said, if you're listening up north, I know you're probably laughing at us. I mean, I No, no, I they're up, they're feeling our no, they're feeling I, our pain. I grew up in Chicago and I understand that. But I, you know, folks, you have to understand Memphis is is in a weird location because you know, down in Florida, I'm guessing they probably don't have to deal with winterizing. I don't know that they ever get below freezing. Maybe maybe they do, but it, it happens occasionally. We're in that weird in-between belt. We we get those weird weather shifts. Yep. We can literally swing 60 degrees in the course of a day. Yes. So, I mean, that's, that's the problem. So, houses aren't necessarily equipped for... We don't have basements out here for the most part. We don't have, no. you know, so it's Well, like, we have too much water for most basements. Right. But, so yeah. we don't have all our stuff because up, up up north, they're they're equipped for this. That's how their houses are designed. So, but. Well, um, and a lot just depends on the builder and the design yeah. and of, you know, I hate to say this, but you, know, you and I have talked about the house of the future and certain things that really need to be planned for failure. That's the thing. I if, if, if it's built this way on the front end, and especially with the technology we have today, I feel like, man, a lot of suffering could be eliminated. Just, yes. just put that extra effort in. If I was building a new house, I would happily spend the extra, I don't know, five or $10,000 to know that when the emergency comes... Either flip a switch or you turn this lever here or whatever in your... Let's make sure you know. that shut off is where right. we can get to it easily. Exactly. Of So, you know, the cautionary tale here is just because the really bad cold weather is behind us a week or two mm -hmm. doesn't mean all of the damage hasn't shown up yet. Right. Yeah. So, like I said last time, cautionary tale of on a nice pretty day... Let's go check those backyard lights and make sure something hasn't been damaged. Yeah. Of And in this case, let's go walk around the house or the apartment complex or wherever you live. If you've got piped water, and pretty much every building on the planet does, you need to go give it a little check and see if something's dripping, hissing, or leaking. Absolutely. Hey, Alan, uh, you mentioned in our show notes last night, uh, uh, there was something about... Um, I wanted to shift gears because you said you also spent some time this week tightening up chairs and furniture, and it sort of triggered me, and it gave me a, a, a desire to chime in on this. But okay. So what was that all about? So. Well, you know, it's one of those of you, you go to a restaurant, you sit down, and the table goes wobble, mm. wobble. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay. Um, and, and let's face it, you and I actually fix it. We're like, we, okay, we actually, I can't eat. I'm going to oh, just fix this thing first. I know. First. Next and thing you know, we're on least, our knees under right. the table, putting a little dial down. Wedge up a folded napkin or uh, something. You under know, the, yeah. after it, this, I find it very funny. After after winter, now mm -hmm. that we're coming into, I know we're talking about spring cleaning. Yeah. Of your furniture has been really, really, really dry. It's expanding and contracting. It has it's contracted. A, yeah. And now is a great time. If that chair is just a little loose... Let's flip it over and let's tighten it back up just a little bit so that it doesn't begin to wobble out the holes well, and make the chair even worse. The reason is, is be the reason it triggered me, Alan, is because if you have a loose table leg or a loose chair or something, it, I don't, I don't care if it's slightly loose. The minute it, it, uh, the, if it's even fractionally loose, all of the strength and everything that's holding it together has been compromised and it's going to be. 10 times weaker. It's going to take one person leaning the wrong way and it's going to collapse the table. Or Somebody's something. So hitting the floor. Yeah. Don't just let that table leg or the chair leg just wobble and get to it later. This is one of those, you know, it takes literally 30 seconds to fix. Well, so, 
and, just and get there, a screwdriver, get a wrench, get whatever you need to tighten it. So. And there are some amazing new glues that mm -hmm. will hold almost anything permanently. Oh, yeah. I love those epoxies that come Ooh. in a syringe. You just it's it's you know squeeze it on. Ooh. It's dry in two minutes. And Never. Scalpel. Yeah. Clamp scalpel exactly. Yeah. So so but but yeah, don't don't ignore loose table legs. It's a or or, loose, or chair legs or chair legs. It's a it's a simple fix and uh, saves you some misery because there's nothing worse than a collapsing chair. It's just one of those happen at a restaurant. You set down the chair goes wiggle wiggle. You're like oh, exactly. y'all need to tighten these up. Yep yep yep. So um, good 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 fundamentals and good common sense uh, fixes. You know. <laughs> anyway, uh, boy, Alan, hour one of Tool Talk Radio is in the can, but never fear, folks. Uh, put on your parkas because when we come back, uh, it's going to get chilly. We're going to talk in in great moments in building history. We're going to talk about the Ice Hotel in Sweden. News Talk ninety eight nine, the roar of Memphis. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. And welcome to Hour 2 of Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning, here with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max over there behind the glass. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. You know, you can always send pictures, too. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to Tool Talk Radio on Facebook and check out the action over there. We've just posted our must-have item of the week. And uh, if you scroll down, you'll find some interesting videos. Some of the videos are really cool, Alan, of um, some of our past uh, episodes of... Uh, Great moments in building history. A lot yes. of times we'll link some, you know, we'll we'll scour YouTube and find the best videos that kind of, you know, give you a nice concise breakdown of the great, you know, the great moment that we are covering. And there's a lot of them that are really interesting to watch. So I, I still love that one segment we did uh, about Raiders Stadium. That was an interesting, yes. that's, that's an interesting building project. So check it out. That's, uh, that's right there over on uh, Tool Talk Radio's Facebook page. So. Uh, we got a lot to get to this hour. We better uh, we better be efficient, Alan. So we're gonna we're gonna mix things up a little, and uh, let's get to our must have item of the week. Quickly. All right, Alan. So uh, now this is on our uh, Tool Talk Radio Facebook page, but tell people what I'm holding up. You here. are holding up the wonderful and infamous bar clamp. This particular oh bar clamp gosh. is a three foot bar clamp, and I put uh, the the way I described it, Alan, is this: the, it's the virtually indestructible bar clamp. Because man, <laughs> I've had this one well over twenty years. I have a set of four. Now, the fun thing about bar clamps, folks, is you could have one. You could, literally, you could have a bar clamp that's twenty feet long if you have yes. a long enough bar. It's really just a matter of it's the. Um, it's the uh, it's tightening mechanism and the the sort of fixed mechanism at the end. It looks kind of like uh, the letter F, I would say, mm. with a with a chin, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or maybe it looks more like a, a letter G or something. But basically, if you can imagine, folks, it is more or less um, a clamp that you can you can clamp anything. This particular clamp is three foot, so I can clamp anything from one inch to you know three feet if i want to like can i this. tell you the number of uh drawers that i have oh, fixed yeah. with those yep they're yep, great they get a little loose they get you know you got the old furniture in the house and you don't want to get rid of it but mm -hmm. that drawers sticking and not fitting right oh yeah uh glue that baby back up bar clamp that son of a gun where where it needs to stay let that glue cure take that bar clamp off and it's brand new furniture time it's uh it's it's amazingly strong and it's like it, it's amazing how much you can clamp with that thing you start torquing that thing down mm -hmm. and and, you, and you're like wow it just you know that that gap in uh in a two by four or something that you thought you could never close all of a sudden you crank that and it just whoosh, closes it right up so one yeah. quick tip i did uh -huh. learn with those yeah if you're really going to crank it down make sure you use a uh contact spacer tell Bingo. Tell people what you're talking about, Al. You're exactly right. Just yeah. a little bit of shim or just a little piece of waste wood or whatever. But when you really start twerking down on that, it, uh, if you don't want marks on <laughs> the material that you're working on, right. make sure you put something on there you can crunch down on pretty good. That's a good tip. It's always important. Like, uh, I have this little box at home in my garage, Alan. It's just a box of just scrap wood. Yeah. And it's just... And, it, exactly because the way this um <clears throat> the way this clamp is it's got like a round um w where you tighten it there's just sort of this round little contact space yes. 
And, and it's a good idea to stick maybe just a flat, you know, a little board because, yeah, you will get a, you'll get, you'll have this round hole on there. Oh, yes. It'll drive right on in there. Yes. Yeah. And even with the contact things, you got to be careful. Yeah. So, but um, that's, that's always a good tip. But, um, man, a bar clamp, you can't go wrong. Get yourself about three or four different size ones because they, they come in all sizes, literally. So, and, uh, they're 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 good for self defense too. If you're in the <laughs> shop working and somebody breaks in, this thing can take somebody out, man. It's, yes, yes, it could. And then it can hold them in place until the police arrive. You can clamp them down. Uh, until you the clamp cops them get down there. to something. So, they're not getting up. Exactly. So, all right, our must have item of the week: the, the uh, three foot bar clamp, or really any bar clamp that that you uh, that you choose. Wonderful thing. The extra hand you wish you had. Absolutely. You know who I wonder now? I I don't know that I've ever seen him utilize any bar clamps in his roofing, but uh, our good buddy jay hill with big m roofing and remodeling i have to believe he's got a set of these for his remodeling work. oh yes can you use I'm, I'm, now that i'm thinking of it would you need a bar clamp for roofing i can't really think of a situation uh, where when you you're would. doing the decking oh uh, okay oh Maybe yeah you I've, gotta I've, torque some wood mm, the right you way. gotta keep this one piece right where you need it for just a second yes absolutely okay well regardless of whatever your roofing needs are you better believe that our buddy jay hill with big m roofing and remodeling has got the tools for the job i mean the guy this is his it's funny you know uh jay hill larry brown these are these are people who are passionate about their work it's yes, they are they th this is their focus i wish i was as focused as them i've got like five <laughs> businesses and all these diversions and stuff you know radio and all this other but uh man laser focused on roofing and remodeling so uh for one thing jay is always uh five stars with the better business bureau uh and good housekeeping he's never apparently is he telling the truth there has he always gotten five star reviews that's his claim i've never heard anything ill about his uh of overall production. I'll tell you this, every Anything. person I've ever referred to Jay Hill, which is quite a mm -hmm. few, love the guy to death and yep. they start giving his name out to all of their friends and everything. And uh, we we use Jay Hill. Jay Hill has replaced our roofs, you know. Yep. Both of us. Both of us and our buddy Brandon Olmstead as well. And uh we were in a Alan, you and I were in similar situations. We had roofs that were damaged and they were covered by our homeowners insurance yes. which was a big it was a big weight off you know my shoulders yes. i know it saved me a lot of money the great thing about that is jay is um a former insurance agent so when you have a a, a roofing claim uh with your homeowners insurance it is nothing it, it's it's not a simple matter of picking up the phone and going okay uh dear insurance company i've got this problem you really need an advocate you need somebody that mm -hmm. understands the process Jay Hill knows uh, knows insurance inside and out, so he he understands the protocols involved. And so, if you contact him, uh, he will tell you, you know, whether you have a whether you have a realistic path forward with that. Regardless, his consultation is free, so there's you know you definitely mm -hmm. want to get get his expertise and and understand the situation that you're in. So. Also, Jay, um, one of the other beautiful things is that they don't just slap a roof up there. These are roofing systems. They are indeed. These have a lifetime transferable warranty, which still hurts my brain to consider. Uh, I, I can <laughs> understand some things having a lifetime transferable warranty, but a roof, that's that's it's an pretty, awesome system. So you sell your house and the, the, the next owner of your home has a lifetime warranty. That is a big selling point. Plus, it's just a good peace of mind for you. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and your roofs are going to run more efficiently. I've told you that in the past, uh, our um, ever since we've got the new roof, our our utility bills have gone down significantly. I notice a fifty or sixty dollar difference in my utility bill because it's running cooler. My roof is running cooler, which means it's going to last longer. It's just uh, they do great work. And if you're in a situation where maybe you need to consider financing, well, Jay's got um, uh, has a relationship with thirty different lenders. You can apply in minutes and. I guarantee at least five or six of those lenders are going to approve you and you can uh, choose the terms that work for you. So get in touch with Jay. There's no reason not to call. One day I'm going to come up with a better thing that's not a double negative. But um, <laughs> anyway, get in touch with our buddy Jay Hill. Call him directly at 901-484-5645 or go to BigMRoofingAndRemodeling.com. All right, Max, it is time. And now... Great moments in building history. My other goal for 2023, Alan, is I'm going to do some research. I am going to scour, you know, all of our archives here, and we're mm. going to find out who that mysterious voice is. I that audio imagine. just showed up here yeah, one day, and imagine. we, you know, anyway. All right, well, Alan, you're... <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. You're spearheading this one. 
What do you got for us today? Well, you know, a little tongue in cheek since it was so cold here. Yeah, uh, let's just keep a the of cold ago, coming. Yeah. Of I I had, you know, it's one of those it's one of those rabbit holes you fall down when you start looking stuff up. Right. Uh, there are a variety of ice hotels mm. around the world, of including a permanent one in Sweden. Right. And when we mean ice hotel, I mean we mean ice walls, ice roof, ice furniture, ice bedrooms, ice cups ice and plates, bar, yeah. plates, ice ice baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, it looks like something out of a cartoon. It really, it, it looks like the Mister I. Or, it really, it's I'm it's, look, Mister Cold, whatever his yeah, name Cold, was. Yeah, Cold Miser. Yeah, yeah. of yeah. when you see the pictures, especially at night when they've got it lit up. Right. It really looks like something out of a Disney movie. Yeah. Pretty interesting. You so. look at these things and you just kind of go, okay, um, wow. And here's the thing: it's actually got. A roof. It's got walls. It's got all of these things that make a building, and well, it's all ice structurally. That's the thing that. It, so I'm I'm watching this photo, and, and you know, Alan had to zero in on one because if you go, if you go to YouTube, like the the one of the YouTube videos I watched said top ten ice hotels in the world, which su right. suggests there's even more, but. Um, for one, okay, well, go ahead, Alan. I mean, the way I looked at it was I would love to visit this place. You couldn't pay me to sleep in that. <laughs> Who wants to sleep in those? Okay, well, anyway, go ahead. Well, you get really big of, uh, they have amazing of sleeping bags so that you can sleep on your big ice bed. I'm not paying top dollar to sleep in five degrees of yeah, well, uh, on an know, ice platform. You are very they, close to the Arctic Circle. Yeah. It, it is way, I mean, this is, this is not something you're going to visit in you know, yeah. uh, North Carolina. Right. This so. is northernmost Sweden. And the fact that the entire facility is something so mobile, because ice moves, ice flows, ice bends. Um, ice is not that solid. And yet they manage to keep this amazing structure up. My my first thing, anytime I see something, anytime I see a big construction or I see any any unusual project, my first thing is, okay, you know, when you build something and you invite people to stay there, you have liability. So you better make sure the structure isn't going to collapse. And when I, when I look up at this ice structure, Alan, all I'm thinking of is what is keeping this thing from shifting, like you say, or something and collapsing tons of ice on people. You know what I mean? It's I, the structure part is sort of fascinating to me. Well, what, what the, is the that fact they, do? they use a lot of pillars, okay, and they use a lot of, I guess you would call it igloo technology, because all the ceilings are rounded. It's like arches. Like exactly. there is no flat ninety degree ceiling in these. Correct. Things. There is right. no big thing to fail. What you have is almost a Lego like construction, mm. and we've talked about the shocking strength of things made out of Legos. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I mean... I want my bomb shelter built out of Legos. I mean, I, mean, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, it is hard to imagine how offset bricks put into an arch mm -hmm. becomes so shockingly strong. Yeah. And when you look at, like, the basic entryway to any one of these, of course, when you walk in, you're overwhelmed by all the other decorations and everything and ice. But when you walk into the front of one of these things, if you just kind of back up and look at the individual blocks of ice, it looks like Legos. Well, and it looks like transparent Legos, which it, is... It almost looks like glass. It looks like blue glass, to be perfectly honest with you. And as you said, they make great use of the arch. Well, it, it you know, here's another thing, too, because these um, these uh, ice hotels... And what, what the reason... Um, uh, we zeroed in on the uh, one in Sweden is because I, I don't know if Alan mentioned this, but this thing's open year round. It's actually enclosed. It, if right. you look at it, it looks like a hobbit hole. It's got <laughs> grass or it's got surface right. on the roof and everything. Um, but what, what I found interesting, I was watching one of the videos on this, Alan, and they had a shop that for all intents and purposes looks like a massive woodworking shop. They're using drill presses. Yes. They're using band saws, but it's for ice. Yes, which, which I'm thinking, okay, well, on the one hand, I, uh, how, how long is a table saw or a bandsaw going to hold up 
with all that moisture. It must be special metal on there. It must be special. You know what I mean? You can't no, just, they have, just keep it oiled. Okay, now, I, I was looking at it and went, no, I just, really, I they, it's a, they went down and bought a bandsaw, and they're pushing the ice through it like wood. Uh, now, here in the South, we don't really think of ice as density and texture. But for mountain climbers, mm -hmm. and I got a couple of buddies that do that, I, I immediately disavow all knowledge of climbing anything frozen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they tell me the ice has a different feel. Uh, depending sure it upon does, its yeah. density, the temperature, and the actual f water content, if that makes any sense, of the ice. So because this is so cold, it's like zero degrees there on a good day. Right. The ice maintains its strength and its rigidity. So it doesn't collapse like a softer ice at like 22 degrees. Yeah. It's still frozen, but it's not as frozen as it was at zero. Yeah. Did you want to say something, Max? I was just going to say, like, I'm uh, you've failed to mention the one thing that you were the most concerned about while watching the video, and that is, how about the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. You watch this, and like I said, it's great to visit. I could not imagine. I'm not sleeping in a room that's five degrees or whatever, but uh, uh, what what is the bathroom situation, Max? I hope they're civilized. I don't it. know. They, oh. they actually do have a warm bathroom and shower in the hotel okay. for all of your business that needs a warmer environment. Okay, because, I mean, obviously you're not showering in a whatever. And, right. and for the wimps, they have separate, um, like a whole separate area that is just like a normal... The well, that's their wilderness camp, which is actually right. a normal everyday hotel type thing. Right. Um, okay. However, what is the most fascinating to me is, A, their temporary art gallery. Mm -hmm. Because if yeah. you go, Joe, and you're, you, you like to do woodwork and that kind of stuff, they'll let you make your own ice thing. Now that's so, yeah, that part of it's fun. You get to make your own, yeah. That you get to pull out the tools and make stuff. Then you go to the bar. Right. And they don't have glasses, they have ice glasses. Yeah, folks, if you can imagine this, imagine a rectangular cube. It's about or I mean a rectangular whatever yeah. and it's about 6 or 8 inches tall and then they just bore a they giant drill hole. They drill it out and there's your glass. And everybody around the bar had gloves and hats and oh, yeah. scarves and everything. Cuz it's 0 degrees in there. And obviously you would have to serve something with alcohol in it because otherwise it would freeze, right? I mean, uh yes. You're not getting a cup of ice water in there. No, well you get a you get a cube of ice, I guess. Yeah. So. Of well, it would be water for a minute. If as long as the water was liquid when it went in, it'd take a little bit to freeze. But you're not you, having hot coffee in there. You're not getting <laughs> a hot cocoa in an ice cup. Yeah. Um, the other one that amazed me, of course, was watching the kitchen work and produce food that they could serve on ice plates. Okay, so you're having cold food. Cold. No, I, this sounds. Wait I a could second. Go, go um, uh, are the cooking structures made of ice? Yeah. How do you cook? Right, it? The kitchen itself is a warmed area. That's interesting. Know, and then they have the plating area, which is a cold area. I was just thinking of another question, too. Yeah. Um, uh, with regards to having electricity through there, how the heck do you have plugs without the whole thing just, like, conducting electricity throughout the water? Because these these are illuminated. That's a good yes. point, Max. These these light, and they're really beautiful. I mean, I will say this. It's cool looking. It, it, it's very artistic, and it, it you know, but but that's another challenge, right? Like, does Jurgen like, like press the switch and everything, and all of a sudden, bzzz, yeah, no, 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 uh, no. <laughs> uh, everything is actually designed for this environment, so everything is waterproof, everything is double insulated, everything is really designed to be used in this environment. Man, so, you talk about water is the enemy. You're making um, a, a structure out of the enemy. Yeah. Well, I it. didn't want to be in it in June. Let's put it that way. Because part of the hotel actually does melt every year. Okay. All of the outer structures do melt and fall down and have to be rebuilt every single year. You know, like when the temperatures get above 20. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, the thing is, um, the thing is, too, this one, as we said, is, is enclosed. And you might think, oh, man, they're probably using all sorts of refrigerant. They're using no. all sorts. But they've got this. Uh, it's, it's almost a uh, zero carbon footprint deal right yes. isn't this like a soul it's funny they're using the heat of the sun to keep the thing frozen yes ironic so those yes. swedes there's something else maybe, uh maybe, welcome you know? well you know this was a great kind of tongue-in-cheek way of looking at energy management water management power management planning for failure this is a 
culmination of all the crazy things we talk about right and flipping it on its head and turning it to your advantage yeah as opposed to constantly fighting it you know it is funny alan because when i look at the the videos and stuff i think of all the theme one of the themes that we that we shout from the rooftops is how important lighting is to your home yes. and boy do they utilize lighting in a cool way oh, on these structures it is beautiful when they do and the funny thing is when you actually get into clicking on all the things like how did you build this and what did you do here there's really not a lot of lighting mm -hmm. it's just really well done well positioned which, well it, yeah you yep. know which this kind of uh, this is one of these weird things that you can look at and you're never going to do anything like this in a home in Memphis but yep. you could get some crazy ideas of a, how you want an end result to look like. Well, you could you could probably recreate some of these effects with glass and mirrors and yes. properly positioned lights. And The big thing is know. the lighting. Is yeah. The other thing they make a great use of in this thing is proper support space and proper use of open blank space. Yeah. No, very good. That's true. They don't they they don't fill up the space. Now, I, I would folks get on YouTube, go check it out. There's there's several ice hotels. They're uh, numerous. They're they're numerous. Um, yes. And and let us know, would you stay in a hotel where it's 5 degrees and you're, <laughs> you know, bundled up and you can get frostbite when you wake up? I'm, no thanks. I'll definitely visit the place, but I'm not sleeping there. Yeah. Nope, nope, not going to happen, Alan. And especially, <laughs> you know, I don't know how much it costs to stay there. but It's actually shockingly affordable. Okay. All right. Well, um, and uh, and uh, free hot chocolate if you survive. So <laughs> anyway, uh, wow, that was an interesting, that, that was good, uh, Alan. Appreciate that one. So uh, you're listening to Tool Talk Radio here at News Talk 98.9, The Roar of Memphis. We're going to uh, we're gonna take a quick break and uh, get around the campfire and exchange some tool tales. Tool Talk Radio with Joe and Alan. You've got paper and you've got paint. A deadly combination! <laughs> Let me show you. News Talk 98.9, the roar of Memphis. I don't know, Alan. After this ice conversation, a little fire is kind of <laughs> kind of pleasant to think about. But uh, anyway, welcome back to uh, Tool Talk Radio, coming to you from the Brown Refrigeration Studios. I'm Joe Thorderson with Thor's Hammer, Carpentry and Wood Turning, here with my buddy Alan Gilbreth from darkoakmedia.com and our pal Max over there behind the glass. You can call or text us at the Big M Roofing and Remodeling Hotline at 901-683-0989. And uh, we invite you to go to Tool Talk Radio on Facebook and check out the action over there. Join the uh, community. If you, um, if you uh, uh, like the page, then you can get alerts, too, when we... When we, uh, Alan, you always link up our past shows there, right? Oh, yes. So, I mean, and what is it? We've got Romania on board now. So, yeah. some, some listener in Romania is so, checking so in. So, pop over to uh, tooltalkradio.com on uh, YouTube or Spotify. Give us a like. Click the link. Subscribe to the channel. You'll always keep up with us. You can take us with you. And I love finding new countries. Yeah, it's I mean, I, it's, it's amazing. New Zealand. Hi, guys. Great Britain. Canada. Uh, join join the pile up because Romania just jumped in. Yeah, so there we, are we good, need some new we need some new internationals. There are good things on the internet. So oh, and I got to do a shout out to our friends in the Dominican Republic, our our largest international following. They were probably uh, shuddering when we're talking about this ice stuff. Oh, they right? were they were laughing at me on the phone, going, "Are you kidding? We would die." And I'm yeah, like, yes, yes, they're not equipped would. for that stuff. No. So, hey, Max, you said somebody uh, weighed in. I guess you know before the break, folks, if you're just tuning in, Alan was talking about the uh, famous ice hotel in Sweden. We're not naming the city because we can't pronounce we, it. We just would embarrass somebody. There's not enough yeah. vowels in that word. But what did they have to say, Max? You said uh, somebody... so. This comes from name and address withheld. <laughs> oh, that's that's all right. That's all right. Yeah. It says, as a skier, ice changes drastically as the sun crosses it. And it's amazing to think how all of this works, how, how all of it works. Yeah. What's keeping it together? Very good. Well, I, He's right. Or he or she is right. Well, yeah. anybody that has done any type of cold weather cross country understands that of when they start talking about snowing, like out in any of the resorts. Yeah. They're, they're always talking about pack or powder or of what time of day is best, what's going to be the fastest, oh, yeah. what's going to be the slowest. Um, so you, when you get into 
uh, temperatures, ice, and snow. Uh, it's a very fascinating study. And from a structural point of view, I'm just thinking you have an ice palace made of interconnected bricks with expansion and contraction and melting. Boy, I would not want to be. Who? Wh what's the insurance policy look like on that? <laughs> That's all I think about. But um, yeah, check it out, folks. Get Other on than YouTube. the bathrooms. Yeah, and how do the bathrooms work and everything? But it's it is pretty interesting, and each one has their own sort of feel to it. There's there's many around the world. Yes. But the one in Sweden is noteworthy because it's open, um, you know, it's open year round. So uh, very interesting discussion. And thanks for uh, to our unnamed listener for chiming in. I think they also had a postscript, right, Max? They said they uh, like visit. Yes. Sleep. No. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You could, I'll visit it. I'll hang out in the ice hotel for an hour or two, but I'm not sleeping on a I'm not uh, sleeping considering they're remote. Yeah, you are. <laughs> no, after a cold day of skiing, I want to go sit behind a roaring fire. And speaking of a roaring fire, Alan, uh, let's let's uh, there we go. Why don't we circle around uh, metaphorically? Let's circle around the uh, the hearth and uh, and the fire and exchange some tool tales. We haven't done this enough, Alan. Uh, well, it's been a bit. You know, we all have a uh, we all have a fondness for tools. We all have some of our favorite tools. We always have those go to tools that we. Oh, yes. literally use every day i'm thinking of my uh, variable speed drill mm. battery powered uh I, I can't believe i finally made the corner yep. you know but alan i'm nice I'm, of you to join this century joe it's you know anyway but uh we're, we're going to talk about some tool tales i'll kick it off alan my my tale is called fun with routers oh yes now routers are okay folks for one thing this is not you know we're always about getting your young people uh, involved with tools a router can be a very dangerous tool extremely I'm, yes I'm, I'm just gonna say right out of the gate i hate to i hate to to go dark right out of the gate but you know we had a uh in um in high school basically a shaper is if you if you take a router you affix it to uh more or less a table like a table right. saw and then you and then you run the you know it you run something through there is is more or less what a shaper is and the kid uh this one kid was using the shaper and he cut the he cut like three of his fingertips off because yep. he wasn't paying attention. He got it too close to the blade. Is that why they called him old lefty? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we yeah, I think so. It was it was pretty bad. I mean, it could have been a lot worse, but still, this is nothing to play games with. This thing will instantly it, it instantly cuts through it's wood. It's designed to remove material. It doesn't care what that material no, is. No, it, it doesn't care. And But a router is very interesting, folks. If you don't know what a router is, imagine it's almost like it, it comes in different shapes and sizes. There's plunge routers. There's things like that. But uh, there's even little mini routers. But what... Uh, what it's used for, if you ever look at a, I don't know, the side of a table, or if you look at a piece of trim with a with a decorative edge, well, a router is what cut that out, or a shaper, you know, how it how it however you want to uh, use it. A router can also be good for just cutting out a straight uh, a straight um, cut, like a dado joint, you know. Wasn't there an old show back in the day called Router's Workshop? Probably. Yeah, I think you're right, Max, because a router is multi-purpose. It's sometimes you use it for decorative means and, and everything. But, um, Alan, I do love my router. Um, I've, I've, I've been through some, you know, been through some good times and bad times with the router. I will say <laughs> early on in my career with the router, one thing I learned is suppose you're suppose you're cutting a tabletop and you want to make that decorative edge on there. Well, it's fun because when you go to the uh when you go to the, you know, to the uh, woodworking store or something, you see all those router bits. But when you look at it, you have to look at things. Uh, it's almost like a photo negative. Because, yeah, it's upside down and backwards. Right. Whatever, it's basically the way your brain has to work. Right. If you want a, a, an open cove, well, you it's a round bit. It looks like that's the last thing it's going to cut. But it, and then if you get one that's sort of, uh, you know, it's it's interesting. You have to think sort yep. of dynamically when you look at it. And uh but um, one thing I learned, for example, if you're cutting like a, a, a rectangular piece, well, when you cut along the grain, part of it also depends on what kind of wood. Oh, Every yes. kind of wood behaves differently. If you have a soft wood, this thing can get mangled. But it gives you immediate results, which is sort of fun. And so you go down the you go down the line. You're pushing this thing along, and uh, it's cutting the shape instantly, which is sort of fun. However, when you get to the end grain. That's where you can get into just because it'll cut great going with the grain. But when you start going across the yeah. grain, Alan, it boy, fights. you got to have a light touch. Yeah, it fights. It'll it'll fray. It'll it'll start getting, uh, you know, it it is not necessarily a fi finished tool because even when you router something, you're going to have to sand afterwards. Oh, yeah. So there's ups and downs with with that. But um, 
I would be very careful of letting anybody do freehand routering. I do not recommend that at all. What do you think, Alan? Yeah. Well, of I had a young lady years ago that had kind of a building project she was taking on. Yeah. And one of them was mounting toilet paper dispensers. <laughs> but the yeah. walls, this was a much older building. Right. And so my suggestion to her was to put a piece of wood behind it. And uh, okay, I got and, you. and then yeah. she was like, okay, but you know, and it's like you can do that, and then you can affix that to the wall, and then you put your toilet paper dispenser on that, and that way you it'll have take something tight the, to screw to. Right. It'll it'll take the abuse of opening and closing it constantly, adding paper. You know, it's a commercial uh thing. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, Well, it's gonna look terrible. Yeah. I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's not. And I said, like, We'll get a router. And of course, when I showed up with the router and showed her how it worked. Utterly and completely intimidated. Yeah. I mean, she took one look at this thing like, there's no way. So the second day we're on the job site, she kind of sidles up and goes, well, let me try it once. Uh-huh. So, you know, it's like, all, right, all the proper safeties, get both hands, do this, do, Hold you know. And make sure you're pushing it the right and, way. And make sure you have your clamps. Right. Your, your board is clamped good. Right. I'm going to bring up your bar clamp again. Right. And... So she tried it a couple of times and then kind of went off to do some other stuff. The next day, she is back, and we're about halfway through the project. Yeah. And the queen of the router had been born. Well, it's she addictive. was. Yeah. She, oh my gosh. She, <laughs> the, I think the worst thing we did to her on day four was introduce her to the fact that there was more than one bit. Oh, yeah. Once you know that you can make all... Well, the thing is, oh, you get instant results, which is... That's yeah. satisfying. So, her yeah. job went from kind of plain. Yeah. She was doing a nice job, but it was kind of plain. The minute that router and multiple bits got involved mm -hmm. and she really got the hang of it... Yeah. That building, that building job went from plain to fabulous. No, I, I believe it. So I want to say one last thing because I just want to talk safety. If you're using the router before you plug it in or before you turn it on, look at the direction that the blade wants to cut yes. and go that way. So in other words, if you're looking in the blade, as I believe, Alan, it should be pointing to the right. Move your router to the right. If you go to the left, it will literally, th it could throw you. Yes. this it, Because it's not going to cut. It's, it's, it's basically peeling out and it's right. like a hot rod it's just yeah. gonna try you know and and that's dangerous it will burn. the router is dangerous be careful but it's it is pretty satisfying it's not it's not deadly but it's just something you want to be careful with so yeah anyway uh i don't want to eat up all the time hey can we throw it to max real quick because he sure. he had a very hit i like it so max you have a tale of two screwdrivers and a socket wrench and it's a little bit more of a story for the motor mouths though but it's still that's requiring okay. something that really needs to be fixed so my silver chariot, which is a 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee, <laughs> mm. had um, uh, its passenger side window would not roll down. And so I figured out that the problem was a window regulator. And right. so I took the aforementioned equipment and I um, uh, gutted the, and I um, uh, took apart the wind, and I took apart like the, I forget what you call it, like the door frame and everything, like to get into the door, like sure, the plastic the part. Yeah, that and plastic that holds in order the, to In the, order to the access the metal area. Yeah. And I, oh, we also didn't include pliers, but pliers were required as well. Okay. And um, uh, I just took, I just watched a, view, a video tutorial about how to do it online. And there was just something very satisfying about being able to do something yourself with simple equipment and like actually get the job done and see um uh, concrete results and my dad said that when i when he saw my face after doing that that it he didn't see that face on me ever since i was a kid <laughs> what face are you talking about max just so. the pure joy and satisfaction of getting a um a difficult task done it is cool because it's a little daunting at first like especially with an auto repair i'm just i'm not going to lie man there's some things with the car i don't even touch but uh, mm -hmm. when you do fix something with your car that is pretty exciting. So, and and Max, like you said, you can jump on YouTube these days. And uh, but this is one of those things where you take it apart, and it's kind of full commitment once you do, right? I mean that that thing's oh, yeah. off. You better get it fixed. So, but because uh, you don't want to do it, you don't want to like I'm a have to. You don't want to have to take it back off and then have to redo it because that's just in a pain. But simple tools, just uh, you know, and it is it's it, it is pretty satisfying. So, all right, good job, Max. But now, Alan, 
Uh, is this correct? Legends of the Coping Saw. Oh, Did I title gosh. that? Correct? It sounds more like a horror story around the campfire. <laughs> yeah. Well, look who we're talking. Look who uh, you know. Look who's about to talk. But anyway, so Alan, the uh, coping saws. That's your tool tale this week. So. Uh, you know, the one thing we kind of get hit with, and again, you know, I, I probably field more questions than you do out in the public these days. There's not a question about. Uh, it. I work alone all day, Alan. I don't have to deal with the stuff <laughs> yeah, you do. You don't have to deal with people. Yeah. <laughs> I deal with people all the time. Right. And one of the things that just kills people is fine corner finishing. Mm, yeah. Because it just, you know, the big saw leaves a burr. This doesn't do it. And, you know, you're trying to fit something together neatly and nicely. And I always have to remind everybody, not everything is fast. And this little dinky thing... That looks like you cut cheese with it. I was about to say, can you describe a coping saw? Some people might not know what that looks if like. If you've so. ever seen a little cheese slicer, you know, it's just, just a, a little, wire. And it's a, a handle with a little U-shaped piece of around it. And then a, a, a more or less a wire or very thin blade of some kind in between the two. And you pull it. You, and well, you can adjust the blade to pull it or push it. Right. But, it, and it and looks like the letter P. It does. It so. it's, it's, looks like you, you you could use it to do cheese, you yeah. know, kind of thing. And you look at it and people kind of go, man, that has got to be the most useless tool in your box. Right. And you're going, no, because when we're coming right down to the nitty gritty mm -hmm. and we need to fit this little piece back in, nine times out of ten, it is off by just... The smallest amount. Well, you know what's nice and about a coping saw too, Alan, is the blade is so thin you barely lose. Like with a with a with a regular like a crosscut saw or so or, or a regular rip saw, you take like an eighth of an inch out of that yes. thing. So this barely makes a dent. It just is the perfect tool for that tiny little corner to get that burr out of there, to get that little edge down to where you want it, and just. Take your time. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel like Geppetto. You're sitting around making something really, really precise. And I'm going to look at Max and go, you like that satisfaction of the job well done? Get the really smug look on your face when something slides into place perfectly. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. not that little gap you got to fill. That it, I mean, it just fits exactly like it should. That is when the coping saw suddenly becomes your bestest friend. I I would say if you've got kids and they, and you tend to do arts and crafts and stuff, that's that's a perfect exactly. like if you're dealing with balsa wood and you're dealing with soft woods and you got to make these weird cuts for their science project and, or something. You know, you know, and that is where you really wind up kind of of uh, getting fancy. So I I will even confess I have used coping saws on other things other than wood. Uh, sure. Because they'll work good on certain rigid plastics. Mm -hmm. of, of the big problem people have, like, well, I need this little piece of plastic because I'm going to use it for decoration, but everything I try to cut it with melts it. Oh, good point. Yeah, because yeah, any can't type, use a power of type of spinning, moving blade is going to make it bubble and burr and, and That's gum a good up. Point. Yeah, and you can sit there now. Coping saw is not fast. You're not going to be done in a second. You're going to be sitting there going... Zzz, 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 zzz. And you better pick the right blade. Blades and are cheap. Just get the packet that's just, got the variety of Yeah, I'll say, you know, just get the, I'll say, get the mixed packet. It's only a couple of dollars. Right. And But you can sit there and go through almost any material that you eventually want to get through. I'll tell you this, Alan. You know, the coping saw... And, it, it, you know, I do like some of those saws. There's a... There's a, a a Japanese saw that they use. I, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's just called a Japanese pull saw. There's something about sometimes when you cut with the pulling motion, right. I feel like it gives you more control. Like you you can hold the item and you pull it, and it just to me it, it doesn't splinter as bad. Right. It doesn't pull. It doesn't shove. the The harsher blades shove the wood grains back and forth really hard. Yeah. And a coping saw is just because it's so soft and so light. Now, you're not going to saw through a tree limb with this thing. I no. mean, this is for tiny, finish-the-job work that makes it look fabulous. Well, Alan, I'm not going to lie. I've cut through a 2 by 4 with a coping saw. Now, I, I will tell you this. <laughs> it, it's not a clean cut, and it's just literally I just had to chop one in half, and right. I didn't feel like walking back to my garage to get – and I just – it, it didn't take long, and I cut it right in half. So. The Japanese saw is called a nokogiri. It is a type of saw used work um, uh, in woodworking and Japanese carpentry that cuts on the pull stroke, unlike most right. European saws that cut on the push stroke. 
And it looks kind of like, cool. You've seen it, right, Max? You're probably looking at it on your monitor right now. It's uh, it's it's got a flexible blade. Yep. It looks like something that you would use in your uh, in your I, martial arts class. I, I have thinking. one in the truck right now. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> they're 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 really cool, and they have a removable blade too. Which yes. uh, so if the blade gets dull, you just you know keep a replacement so, there. It's so. a little now. It's not an instant tool. You're not going to pick it up and be great with it. It takes a little bit of practice to kind of get the hang of using something this lightweight because yeah. you're not used to it. But again. Wide variety of materials of, especially for you artsers and crafters and DIYers trying to do little stuff, amazingly effective tool. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, guys, yeah, we need to, we need to, you know, like I said, exchange some tool tales. That's going to, we're going to have to do that a little more often. And, of course, dear listeners, if you've got any great tool tales, if you got pictures oh, of yeah. your favorite Maybe you've got that, uh, you know, maybe you've got that hammer or maybe you've got that something that you've had handed down in your mm. family and it just, you you use it almost every day or well, something. I got that 1920s craftsman saw I found in a barn. Yeah. I love that thing. It still works beautiful. Or maybe pictures of some of the things you've made with these tools. You mm -hmm. know, we want we want more of that. Going into 2023, we, we need more of that, folks. So, and uh, Robbie, I'm looking at you. The guy sends us messages all the time. <laughs> Let's see some of your handiwork because I, I know he's a... He's a tool guy. He works with tools. So, Hey, uh, before we get out of here, I've, I've got some suggested viewing, and I've got a call to action for anybody out there making oh. YouTube content. Okay. Okay. So, Alan, I think you've probably seen this channel. It's kind of a funny name. This is a British guy. I, I don't remember. I don't know if he even gives his name, but the channel is called B1M. Yes. You know, <laughs> the B1M is what it's called, and it's just literally a capital B, the number one, and M. So if you get on YouTube, folks, and you look it up, um, I really like I like the, this guy's style. He's a he's a British guy, and he um, he tends to you know uh, that's one of my go to things for any of our great moments in building history. He tends to have the same interests. He he he's you know he'll do a video on the Burj Khalifa. He's doing videos cool. on on a lot of these massive um, building projects. He's he's always he kind of talks about similar themes that we do. What I like about it is. Uh, folks, if you're out there on YouTube, I'll, I'll just tell you one of the, let me just say one of the things I hate. One of the things I hate is when someone goes, Hey, we're going today to the, uh, the ice hotel. Right. And it's vid they're holding the camera in front of it. So we're looking at their face and in the background is whatever. And the camera's jiggly and it's really, they're making it all about them. <laughs> <laughs> and that irritates the heck. I hate those I wanna videos. See, I want to see. I want to see hotel. where you're at. Right. I want to see the ISO. This guy, it's all about the structure. He he's not the star of this. It's about they're generally about eight to ten minutes long, which is what I need. I don't want a thirty second video, but I also don't want a thirty minute video. Right. I think ten minutes is about the sweet spot. And uh, so the B1M is a is a great YouTube channel, and it it really. Uh, complements what we do here. So if you if you're interested in any of the things we do on Tool Talk, it's a great it's a great channel. But um, if you're out there and you're making content, this you, you could do better. You know, you could do worse than to to copy this model. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's probably a trigger for you too, Alan. I mean, you make video content. I do. I, hate that I do. Dark Oak Media. Uh, we have a lot of fun. But you know, the the name of the game is of uh, show off your content. Yeah. Not, not not my shiny bald head. Yeah, it's about that. And people don't tune in for it. They tune in. They want the information. Right. They want it concise. They want to see some good images and get in, get out, drop the mic, and go on to the next one. So, well, Alan, uh, before we get out of here, speaking of uh, Dark Oak Media, what's what's cooking? I, I well imagine that uh, <laughs> Scott J. Carroll's got his camera out this weekend, right? Uh, I mean, he will be of, uh, recording a show today at ShadowCon. So yeah. you want to be on TV, pop out there. Yep. Um, the biggest one right now we've got going on is it came um, cooking in a tiny kitchen. Okay, that's new. Good. That's yeah. that's a brand new one. Um, cooking in a tiny kitchen. How tiny are we talking? Uh, we're we're talking pretty small. We're talking like you know 1920s apartment kind of small. Okay. Little tiny galley kitchens. So you don't have to have a giant HGTV kitchen right to enjoy your kitchen. Um, Scott's got one on there with, uh, cookies. He's hmm. having a good time with. Yeah. Uh, so we, we're, we're working on a couple of new projects. We've got a new season of, it came from the international market about starting two weeks. Yeah. And other new content. So just, uh, pop over to darkoakmedia.com and, uh, go check out Geeky Side Television and any of our other shows or content. 
Okay, cool. And also, uh, if you're a content creator, <laughs> Alan's. I already know you're. You, you've got some things going with some of the the University of Memphis uh, we're, we're, groups we're, and we're, things we're like that. Working with a few, yes. Yeah. So check that out. So uh, go to darkoakmedia.com. All right, Alan. Uh, very quickly, I, I just want to mention that if you uh, if you've got anything made out of wood, or, or if you want to build anything made out of wood for the outside of your home, I'll do inside work too. But I'm really partial to the outside projects. Maybe you've got a deck or a pergola or a patio cover or, a, you know, screened in porch that you want built or something interesting. You know, I, I like the interesting projects. Give me a call. You can call me directly at 901-921-7105 or go to my website, thorshomes.com, which I almost let lapse, Alan. Um, you know, you know, when you get that alert that says your, your yep. website domain name is going to expire in X number of days. I got busy and forgot. Well, last night was the the deadline to renew it. So I finally renewed it. So never fear. You can go to, you know, thorshomes.com. <laughs> I'd have uh, bought it for you. It's okay. Get in touch with me. Well, you just wonder, like, if it gets snatched up or something, then I'm yeah. stuck, you know. It happens. Anyway, come see. Uh, so, Alan, we're, we're, we're dividing and conquering. You're going to be at ShadowCon over at the Clarion Hotel near the... Uh, Near the airport, I'm going to be at Anime Blues Con Winter Remix over at the Landers Center. As soon as we get out of here, we're going to be geeking we're out the rest out. of the day. So, but uh, another another interesting show. Lots of lots of unique content. And Max, uh, we appreciate your contributions uh, as well. But it's time to get out of here. So, on behalf of my buddy Alan Gilbreth and our pal Max over there behind the glass, I'm Joe Thorderson. Thanks for listening to Tool Talk Radio, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>